Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Rachel and I am knitting. Not right now, but most of the time, and I have been knitting, so I'll tell you all about it. Today's video is episode 14 of my weekly podcast series, where I go over my knitting, spinning, and other fiber-related shenanigans from the previous week. So if that sounds interesting to you, click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future podcasts. Today's episode goes over my knitting from May 20th to May 26th. Today, day of filming, is May 27th, and you'll be seeing this on May 28th. So uh, there's a calendar update for you. Time is a thing that happens and days are uh, things that pass. All right, let's continue. So the course of the last week, I have done quite a bit of knitting on not quite a bit of projects. There's only a few projects that I have updates for you on, but some of them are juicy updates. So just buckle up and get ready for the juice. Or whatever. Okay, so uh, the first update I want to give you is on my cow cardigan. Last week when I updated you on the cow cardigan, I was just working on one of the front panels. If you're familiar with this sweater pattern or this general construction, you may be familiar with the fact that you knit a front panel on the left side, you knit a front panel on the right side, you knit a back panel, and then once all three of those panels are at the length you want for your armhole depth, you then join all of those panels and knit down the body. So last week I was working on the first of two front panels. I hadn't done the back panel yet. This week all of those panels are done and I am knitting away on the body. So even just holding it up like this, even when it's like this amorphous blob of knit stitches, you can tell that there's a lot of fabric here that I have worked up over the course of the past week. In fact, let me put these on some stretchy cords. They're called a few different things in the marketplace of the fiber community. Um, they're called knit extension cords sometimes. They're called barber cords sometimes. But really this is just uh, holocone, holocone, hollow silicone, oh my gosh, hollow silicone tubing. Dun, 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 dun. Yes. Okay, so I got, um, I purchased this from various retailers in the past. Like I've purchased them as barber cords on Etsy. I've purchased them as knit extension cords from Twice Year Cheap. But the best value for these is to just get a spool on Amazon. See, like I have here. You can get it in different um, diameters. So the hollow the hollow tubing is basically a different diameter for uh, depending on the needle size you want to put it on. Anyway, this is a total aside. What I'm doing right now is putting my cow cardigan on this silicone tubing. Uh, what I like to do is I tie two loose knots on one end of the silicone tubing just so that the knot is big enough that the yarn will not go past the knot and I stick the tubing on the end of my needle and then I just use that to transfer my live stitches from my needle onto this tubing. So if you haven't tried these before, uh, I definitely recommend it. I have multiple colors from multiple sources, but like I said, the best value is definitely just getting a spool of it. So I have the link for the spool I purchased in the video description box. But anyway, I do that on both ends of the needles and I make sure I tie a knot on both of the silicone tube tubes that I'm using because I don't want to lose stitches on either side. And then just working from the middle of my whip, I just kind of slide and distribute the stitches so they are fully stretched out. Nothing is scrunched up on a needle. This is great to uh, try your knits on as you're working them up. And it's also great for putting sleeve stitches on hold. So. I definitely recommend these. wasn't planning to spotlight these, but since, since I'm doing this, I might as well tell you what I'm doing. Okay, so now 
the stitches are spread out to the point where I'm able to try this on without um, like fear of losing stitches off the needles. So here's how far I am on the cow cardigan. Let me pull this yarn around so it's not giving me trouble to show you. Uh, look at this. Here it is. Um, I have been alternating skeins, but maybe you can see there's like a patch here that I don't know. It's like, I don't know. It's more purple than the other parts, but it's okay. I'm not worried about it to the point of frogging back. So it just kind of is what it is, but I am really happy with this. This is going to fit. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. I hope. Um, I mean, I have, re I have reason to be skeptical of anything at this point after the issues I've been having with Gage, but, uh, I think that it's going to be a perfect size for me and I'm just trucking away on the body. I was a little hesitant about the depth of the armhole sleeves, but I think that it will be okay. In fact, um, like an inch or, so, inch or so after I joined all of the panels and was knitting down on the body, I did pick up stitches for one of the sleeves and I knit a few rows, put it on stretchy cords, tried it on just to make sure that the armhole was deep enough for my preference before I continued knitting on the body. Because if the armhole is not deep enough and I knit the entire body before knowing that, that's a whole body's worth of work that was for nothing because it it really you need to make the armhole as deep as you need it to be before you knit the body it's hard to modify that after the fact so i feel good about this is the long story short i feel really really good and i am kind of like i thought also maybe i should knit the sleeves first it's mentioned in the pattern that maybe it would be a good idea. I know some people do that because there's this benefit of once you knit the sleeves, then the body is all that's left. And when the body is done, you're done. You don't have any danger of being trapped on Sleeve Island. But I'm at the point where like I'm basically halfway done with the body. And I feel like if I, if I changed course to knit the sleeves now, I feel like that would be, that would make me feel like I had a lot more to go. Like I would, I maybe would finish one sleeve and then I would still have a whole nother sleeve and then the, like half of the body. Like for me, that just seems like a long list versus just finishing the body now and then doing the sleeves after. So trucking away on this cow cardigan. It's a really well written pattern. I'm taking lots of notes for my FO diary installment on this pattern. Uh, and I'm looking forward to being done with it. I think that I can finish it, uh, I don't know, definitely not before the end of May, but certainly in June, this should be done. I'm wrapping the yarn around me. So there's the update on my cow cardigan. Really, really enjoying that knit and really enjoying the yarn. Like just look how good this yarn looks. I have it on my yarn minders here, but it's like, the perfect purple blue periwinkle combination. All right, so now that we've had a moment to sing the praises of the cowl cardigan and the yarn that I'm working it up in, let's pivot to maybe um, not as celebratory project update, and that is the project update on my Issa cardigan. So the update on the Issa cardigan is certainly not as exciting as the cow cardigan and since I've totally finished the body of this cardigan I can just put it on I don't need to put stretchy cords on it um but this cardigan last week I told you that I had suspicions that it was too small but I was going to block it to basically decide for myself once and for all if that was the case well I have since wet blocked it. It has fully dried and I have indeed come to the conclusion that this is too small, at least for the look I'm going for. Is it weird when I have shots where I'm, I have no head? Sorry. Uh, anyway, back to exactly that shot that I'm wondering if is weird. Okay. So this is too small. 
It's too small for my preference. Um, there's a time and a place for negative ease depending on your personal preference with what you make for your body. This is not my personal preference for my body. If this were an open cardigan, fine, great, whatever. If this were an open cardigan without lace, fine, great, whatever. But I want to wear this closed, or at least I want to have the option of wearing it closed. And if I button this up, I will have a button pop out Someone will die. It will hit someone. I know it. Straight through their brain. And I cannot handle, I cannot handle uh, causing harm. So, uh, hello. This is not going to work. <sighs> disappointing. Really disappointing. Um, so, basically, this sweater is going to be re-knit. Um, when I was talking about this in last week's podcast, um, in response to my Issa Cardigan update, one of you commented so sweetly that you admire that even when I have to frog a project or restart a project, I just get back to it. And I'm not going to just get back to this for, I don't know. I don't, I do not know. Like, okay. Uh, when I started the episode, where did it go? Vanished into thin air. Oh, I'm sitting on it. When I started the episode, I was, I not only am I sitting on it, but I also rolled my office chair wheel over it. <sighs> when I started the episode, I was wearing my field day cardigan, okay? And if you're not familiar, this was just a, a huge labor of love to get this from skein to finished object because I knit nearly all of the body in the fall slash winter of 2023 and ended up frogging the whole thing and saying, you know, my future self will revisit this. My future self will be equipped to tackle this, but my current self just can't stomach it. So the field day cardigan sat, the field day cardigan didn't sit actually, it languished in a corner of my heart and my mind and my craft room until I had the fortitude to look at it again. So if I frogged this in November or December of 2023, I did not start this again until uh, March 30th. So that's at least three months of languishing. So I don't know if the Issa cardigan is going to languish for three months because I do want this in my wardrobe. I think it's so cute. I also think that I am better, faster, stronger, smarter, like in terms of this pattern. I think the issues that I had knitting this the first, the first time, the first time, to say nothing of my issue with the fit, like my button band confusion and um, some other things that escape me right now. But I think that I will be able to round those corners much more deftly and efficiently and gracefully than I did on this first attempt knitting. The mistakes that are within this fabric, that the secrets this fabric holds will not be present in the new and improved knit that one day I knit it into. I'm just speaking in riddles now. Basically what I'm saying is when I re-knit this, I'll, I'll be better <laughs> at it, I hope. So that's good, but yeah, it is disappointing that this isn't fitting the way that I want. I measured the gauge on this, and my gauge is 19 stitches and 28 and a half rows equals 4 inches. But the pattern has 18 stitches uh, and 30 rows being 4 inches. So it makes sense why this is smaller than I wanted because, well, for a few reasons. Number one... <laughs> I knit like two sizes smaller than my actual bust size because I'm so used to being a like like a looser gauge knitter. Like I'm so used to doing that where I have to size down a few sizes to get the actual size I want. But I was close to the pattern gauge without I don't I don't know I don't know how this happened because I simply don't know. Um I mean, I know. I don't like, please don't explain addition and multiplication and division to me. Like, I understand math as a concept. I don't care to get to know it. Okay? 
I speed dated math at, during my time as a student, and now I'm happily married to uh, not math, basically. That was a bad metaphor, but basically like, okay, I don't know. I don't know how to crack this code up here. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, it is, it is definitely smaller than I want it to be. Now I have a cardigan, like come to think of it, my throwback cardigan, my purple throwback cardigan is like 47 inches. And that's like six inches of negative ease. And I love how that cardigan fits. I love the fit of it. I wear it all the time. But for a lace cardigan, like I want the lace to be shown off. And if it's an open cardigan like this, and it just sits like this all the time, that's not gonna show off the lace panels. I want these spread and stretched out. I mean, not stretched, stretch, but you know. I want the lace panels to be the showstoppers, prominent. And frankly, if it's super tight around my bust, like, not really interested in that. And also, uh, I want the buttons to not be bunched. So I need to make it, um, I think I need to make it two sizes bigger than I knit it. Because based on my gauge, the next size up would be about 53 inches which isn't that much positive ease when it comes to buttoning a cardigan. I don't know. I need to think this through a little bit more. But two sizes up would be 56 inches, which would be about four to six inches of positive ease, depending on, you know, which way the wind blows that day. So just need to think about it. But definitely at least one size up, if not two sizes up, when I am ready to revisit this cardigan, which may be later today, may be next year. We don't know. We won't know until it happens. I don't know. You don't know. None of us know. We'll just wait and see. We'll just wait and see what happens. So there's the update on my Issa cardigan. It's not the most happy of updates, but it is the truth. It is the truth. Um, I also will say that knitting with this yarn, this is a uh, Treehouse Knit Cashmere Elm DK. Oh my gosh, it's so, so soft. It's really, really dreamy. So I definitely recommend this yarn if you're looking for a cashmere blend. I think they have it in a fingering base as well. This is DK, uh, but it's just a dream. So I know that whenever this sweater is in my wardrobe, completed with the fit I want, looks how I want, feels how I want, I'll be so, so happy. I have um, four skeins left, I think, that I haven't wound yet. So what I may do is not frog this right away, just leave this intact, and then use my uh, skeins I haven't used yet, plus the cake that I have left over from this first attempt, start with that yarn as opposed to frogging this sweater right away and just having a bunch of crinkly yarn. Um, I think that's probably what I'll end up doing. And that will be that. So we've got the cow cardigan update. We've got the Issa cardigan update. The next project to update you on is my Asusena uh, pullover which I'm knitting with Unit Co. for their knit along. I'm not gonna finish it in time for the knit along deadline. I, I've i known this for a while, it's just not in the cards. Um, but, and I don't even have it in my room with me. It's kind of become my purse project because the actual purse project I cast on, I am not sure about. Like it's not really speaking to me. I cast um, a Riptide 135 on. But I stopped at a bad stopping point where I'm not through the increases yet and I don't really remember what row I'm on and it stressed me out so I just set it aside and haven't revisited it. But my Asusena is in stockinette in the round on the body at the point I'm at in the pattern so it's easier to grab and go even though it's a bigger project. It's a um, meditative, like I don't have to look at a pattern project. So I did bring that with me to the movie theater recently. Uh, DJ and I went to see the new Mad Max movie, which was really good. We really liked it. Um, and I got a little bit of knitting done on the Asusena there. I, I didn't knit during the movie. I had plans to, but I didn't knit during the movie because we got some food. Like we went to a movie theater that serves food as well. 
and my hands were all, you know, foody and french fry touchy and whatever. So I just knit before our food came and before the lights went down and then enjoyed the movie. So uh, don't even really have it to show you. You wouldn't be able to notice the progress anyway, just like maybe a row and a half that I knit on that this week. And then I do have a new cast on to show you. I have recently cast on a ranunculus and I have my uh, yarn on my twister which is spelled T-W-I-Z-Z-T-E-R. I'm using the twister for a few reasons. One, because both of my lemon woods are occupied. And two, because I want to get some more use on this so I can um, uh, more be more knowledgeable about the differences between the different yarn minder options on the market for when I make that comparison video I've mentioned uh, before. But I did cast on a ranunculus this past week and the yarn is In Bloom on Redwood Worsted from Treehouse Knits. It's a really pretty variegated with creams, pinks, and some purples. It's really, really pretty. Um, this yarn was originally gifted to me to help promote the favorites collection with Treehouse Knits last summer, and I had four skeins left of it, so I figured a ranunculus was in order. Now, I have not only worked on the ranunculus, it looks like a little shriveled up I don't know, beanie or something, but it is the yoke of a sweater. <laughs> uh, not only did I cast this on this last week, but I'm also keeping track of the time and the materials that go into making this. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, and I have it all written down somewhere and screenshotted, so don't worry, it will all be accurate when the time comes. Uh, but if I remember correctly, this is an hour and 37 minutes worth of knitting on the ranunculus, and I am on the uh, slip one purl row, if you're familiar with that, um, with this pattern. So this will be uh, one of, if not my next installment of my series where I investigate the true cost of handmade items. So if you've been wanting to see what a handmade sweater really costs, like if someone asks you, hey, when are you going to make me a sweater, and you want some guidance on how to price that out, you can keep your eyes peeled because I will have a how much does it cost installment featuring the ranunculus uh, hopefully soon, probably in the next uh, month or so. We'll see. Um, we'll see when it comes out, but keep your eyes peeled for that. I'm really enjoying knitting the ranunculus. I, as you saw, not that far, but uh, every time I knit this pattern, it's just a joy. I get a lot of gratification out of this textured, lacy yoke. It's so fun, in my opinion. So if you haven't knit the ranunculus, uh, definitely put it on your short list because I really, really, really enjoy it. And the best part about it is you don't have to swatch because every size starts exactly the same through the yoke. Uh, so you can knit the yoke and then determine what size to make because you don't have to swatch. It's great. It's amazing. I wish more patterns were written that way. Plus, it's knit on size 10 needles. So that's a very open gauge, very large needles. So it goes by quickly then if you were knitting on a smaller size needle. So with the Cal Cardigan, the Issa Cardigan, the Asusena, and the Ranunculus, that's all the project updates I have for you. But I do have some goals for the week. I mentioned this on my Instagram profile, but during the course of this week, I want to get five skeins <laughs> off this yarn wall and into a project, whether that means it's fully worked up from start to finish or it's just caked up and I'm actively knitting on it, that's fine too. But I want to get five skeins in work from this wall. And I have some plans already in place. For instance, uh, let me grab them actually. Okay, so these were even different than what I first thought when I posted about this on Instagram, but uh, just five skeins that I just picked off the wall that I think I could realistically work up this week 
are these two skeins of boucle yarn from Treehouse Knits. These are from her favorites collection Overflow. Um, this is on Silky Boucle, which is 70% mulberry silk and 30% fine merino and the colorway is called worth fighting for so I think this is from originally maybe from her is it her stranger things collection I'm not sure but I got this from favorites collection overflow I discovered last year in 2023 that this boucle base from treehouse knits this is a fingering slash maybe a sport weight base. This cranks up beautifully on my circular sock machine from Dean and Beans. So I think that I'll crank these two skeins up into a nice long scarf. I think that will be really good. I'll do it on my 72 needle cylinder, which is the largest cylinder I have, meaning it is the cylinder that makes the largest circumference tube of the cylinders I have. So I think that will be really nice. That will be a quick, you know, an hour or two project. So that is two skeins of my five skein goal right there. And then uh, I didn't originally pick these out when I was making this goal, but seeing them just now, I really think maybe I should cast this on today and maybe this should be my new purse project. Um, these are skeins that I got at the Rose City Yarn Crawl earlier this year in March. This is the Ruby and Roses Lavender Haze from her Taylor Swift collection. And um, it's on her Rose Gold base, which is a Stellina fingering weight base. Now, this is the first skein of Stellina yarn I've had. And really, it's beautiful. When you see people promote Stellina bases, which means it has this sparkle in it, I've always seen people say, like, the sparkle doesn't show up as much on camera. The camera does not do the sparkle justice. Let me tell you, that's all true. It's all true because looking at this skein in person, it is so much, it's so much more beautiful than when I look back at what I've recorded with this on camera. Like, you just have to trust me on this. If you haven't seen a skein of Stellina in person, it's amazing. And also, if you're wondering, can you feel the Stellina? Is it scratchy? Is it prickly? No, I cannot, I couldn't tell this was there. If I had, you know, two skeins of yarn, I can't tell the difference if one has Stellina versus the other. It's, it doesn't change the softness of the yarn at all, in my opinion, at least based on how it feels in skein form. Certainly, I'll know more once I'm working with it, but... Um, anyway, my plan is to hold this skein of Lavender Haze um, from Ruby and Roses with this, um, what is this, uh, Mohair, it's Kids Silk Haze, uh, 25 gram skein. So we've got 70% Mohair, 30% Silk, and I think holding these together for a double brimmed hat would just be perfect. So definitely my color, definitely on brand for me. So there's... Uh, four skeins of my five skein goal right there and then I think it's reasonable to assume that the fifth skein could be made up of uh, adding in a skein of this Malabrigo Rios in the colorway Pisces for my cowl cardigan. Certainly I will be needing to add at least one or more skeins in. I don't know. I have quite a bit of these skeins um, caked up. Like I have a lot left of these two on my lemon woods. So I'm guessing this, hmm, I'm guessing this would take me through the body and then I'll probably need maybe a skein and a half, two skeins to finish the sleeves. We'll see, but definitely we'll need to cake up, I think at least one other skein. So there we go. We have five skeins that I think reasonably I can expect to have off the yarn wall and caked up and being worked up 
throughout the course of this next week. So that's one of my goals for the week, in addition to continuing to work on the projects aforementioned and continue to make progress. All right, we've gone over project updates and goals for the week. That means it's time for the Spin Diary section of the podcast. So welcome to the Spin Diary section. Let's talk about my spinning. Um, well, I have a skein of yarn. I made this. <gasps> Amazing incredible. The crowd goes wild. It's so uneven. <laughs> and I don't care. I don't care. You can't tell me anything about uh, anything because I don't care because I'm so proud of myself that I made yarn. Uh, I made this yarn. Well, of course, I didn't make it in one day, but I finished the bobbin or I finished the Coriadale fiber that I was spinning up uh last Wednesday finished spinning that on Spinelli my spinning wheel which is behind me here uh, uh yeah finished spinning it on Wednesday May 22nd I uh plied it I wound it on my nitty knotty I skeined it up I washed it I dried it and I how to skein. Uh, I haven't spun a single fiber since. Basically, on May 22nd, last week, I spun all day between finishing up the Coriel fiber, plying it together, washing it, thwacking it, drying it, skeining it. I, that was my whole day. And I, I'm just not, I don't know, needed a break. So I've been taking a few days break. But I'm really proud of myself that I made a skein of yarn. Uh, after I made this, I immediately texted a photo to my mother, my sisters, my husband, and my father, and Leslie. And uh, I was so proud. I was so, so proud. But I haven't revisited spinning since. I think that, uh, I don't know, I need to, I need to figure out how to do this. Oh my gosh, I know how to twist things, but when I'm on camera, I lose my mind. Ugh. Well, I'm, that's not good either. I'm going to do this off camera later and get this back to being cute and pretty and, and back to being brave and feeling like you can't tell me anything because I'm amazing and I made yarn. <laughs> but I don't feel that way now. I feel like an idiot because I can't twist this how I want it. Um, yeah. So, the status of spinning, aside from this skein and being a little burnt out, is I still have nearly a full bobbin on Elliot Stapler. I haven't done anything with this Corydale on the bobbin, but my plan is to get half of this on another bobbin and then ply them together. So I have a skein from Elliot Stapler to compare to my skein from Spinelli, and I can just, you know, have them for comparison. Um, but what I was going to say is when I texted the photo to everybody, my mom asked me what I was going to knit with it. And the answer is nothing. I am not gonna knit this up. I have another, I, ha I have a bobbin with some of this fiber left that I'll ply up and make another skein and maybe I'll knit from that. But I want to keep my first skein in skein form because this is now a historical relic. This is this is a artifact, an artifact on the historical journey of my learning to spin. I always want to have this because hopefully, presumably, cross your fingers, clench your butts, I will improve <laughs> in spinning as the days, weeks, months, and years go by. So I want to have this as my metric. This was my first skein ever, and I want to compare it to my future skeins that I that I spin up. So that's an exciting update. I made yarn. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm so proud of myself, and I'm excited to continue spinning once I feel a little less burnt out. I don't think I should spend a whole day doing spinning things. Like, that was a lot. And uh, uh, if you've ever been on a boat, you know when you get off of the boat and you still like you can, like you feel like you can still, what am I trying to say? You feel like you can still feel the waves. You like feel a little boat rocking. Um, I felt that after my full day of spinning. Like I felt like, 
I was spinning around. So I don't know. It was just it was a lot. It was a lot. I need I need to be so mindful of like not putting all my focus into one task. Like there's a time and a place. Sometimes that's super helpful and super helps me be productive and like that like there's nothing inherently wrong with it. It's morally neutral. But also sometimes it has adverse effects on my mind and my body, whether that is I still feel like I'm spinning around or I feel burnt out on whatever the task is that I focused on so intensely for that period of time. So the latter, I mean both definitely happening, but the latter still happening. I still feel a little burnt out on spinning, um, but it is what it is. I'm sure that will go away soon. And I will be traveling soon, and Elliot Stapler is coming with me, so I'm continuing the 100 Days of Spinning Challenge while I travel by bringing Elliot. Um, I'm really excited. I'll be visiting family, and I'm excited to show my, uh, the, you know, the little ones in my family, my e-spinner, and see what they think. They might not care. They might think, like, Aunt Rachel, uh, who gives a flying fart? Not us. And that's okay, but they might be enamored by it, so... Uh, yeah, I'll just anticipate, uh, their responses, whether they like it or not, I'm eager to see what they think. So, uh, yeah, there's an update on my spinning diary. Uh, the next section of the podcast is acquisitions, and guess what? I have no acquisitions to show you, so big fat nothing for you. You're welcome, and moving on. So, next we have announcements. All right, welcome to the announcements section of the podcast. I almost have a big fat nothing for you in this section, except for one announcement, which is a really big deal and exciting announcement, and that is on June 8th, Worldwide Knit in Public Day, it's a Saturday, I will be at the Maryville local yarn store, Hook and Needle, which is also called Marivel Yarn Studio. So if you are in East Tennessee on or around June 8th, make a stop over to Marivel Yarn Studio and say hi. I'll be there. I'll be giving a talk and also, I believe, a demonstration on how to use the cordsmith and just hanging out, knitting, making new friends. I might have Elliot Stapler with me. I don't know. So if you want to see what uh, an e-spinner looks like or feels like or whatever, uh, you can watch me spin, ask questions, give me tips if you're a spinner, uh, things like that. So yeah, short and sweet announcement section. I don't think I normally even have an announcement section, so you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so basically that's all I have to say. I had project updates. I had high highs and low lows this week, including a cardigan that didn't fit, a skein of yarn that I made myself. Oh, also, let's talk about this, by the way. Um, I get so much crap on Instagram whenever I post literally anything about my sock machine because people say it's not handmade. You didn't make it with your hands. Y you know, you cheated. Did my spinning wheel make this? Like, like why, why does spinning wheel content get so much reverence and so much admiration and so much like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. But a sock machine is like, you're cheating. That's not a real sock, <laughs> which is so like, oh my gosh, it's so absurd. Um, but it's very bizarre. Like I, I know there's a difference between hand spinning. Like if you're using a drop spindle or a Turkish spindle, that might be considered hand spinning. Whereas using a spinning wheel would not be maybe, I don't know. It's just like so bizarre. The like levels of gatekeeping of the term handmade, like I've received zero flack that I guarantee you I would receive if I post similar content with my sock machine on Instagram. This is me just ranting about Instagram. It doesn't, like, none of this ever happens on YouTube. But, um, yeah, just interesting. Like, so interesting. What is the threshold for people's minds to, like, pick a fight over something over whether it is or is not handmade? Like, spinning this on a spinning wheel, I use like yes I use my hands to control the fiber but I wasn't physically spinning it the machine the wheel was spinning it or in the case of the e-spinner the e-spinner was spinning it I didn't spin it 
like I manipulated the machine and I manipulated the fiber going into the machine much in the same way that I do when I'm using my circular sock machine. But people just get their just like britches in the biggest twist about the circular sock machine. But when it comes to a spinning wheel, they're like, oh, a cottage core goddess. Like, can we can we like pick can we pick a threshold and just be consistent? Because it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know, just food for thought, food for thought. Um, yeah, so that's all I have for this week's podcast. Uh, next week is sure to be exciting because I'll let you know whether or not my goal of five skeins for the week was uh, like actualized. Did that actually happen? You will have to come back here next week and find out my podcast go up on Tuesdays at 8 a.m. Central Time. So, you know, wait with bated breath. But inhale and exhale a little bit in between, because if you wait a whole week, you will die. All right, so on that cheery note, love ya. Hope you have a great week. Hope you're knitting something that's bringing you joy or spinning or crocheting or quilting. Or if you are a fiber civilian and you don't make any of those things, I hope that you're doing something else that is fulfilling and enriching and bringing you joy this week. So have a good week. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you don't already and hit that notification bell to be notified of my next upload. Last but not least, head over to Instagram and follow me at Rachel is Knitting if you don't already. All right, thanks for watching and have a great week.